thankful for the gifts of the people of the land. We offer our respect to those ancestors who may be here interred. Creator, let us be of good mind and reconcile the mistreatment of this land to those who have been displaced. With thankful and respectful hearts, we pray in your name, your Son, the Peacemaker, and the Sacred Three. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Remaining standing, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, may we run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will go with you, will not go, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make you, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, To the emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I stand here and speak in the name of God, who is Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. I subscribe to uh, Richard Rohr's daily blog, maybe some of you do as well. Providentially this week, maybe providentially, maybe it was planned, uh, Thursday, Richard offered a reflection on the justice work of Jesus. He remarked how many a justice activist is liable to get a little disappointed and frustrated with the Jesus of the Gospels, who only once seems to take direct action in the infamous overturning of the tables in the temple precincts. Rohr remarked, Jesus' social program, as far as I can see, is a quiet refusal to participate in almost all external power, structures, or domination systems. His primary action is a very simple lifestyle, which kept him from being constantly co-opted by those very structures. It strikes me that this equally well-known and perhaps equally infamous story of the emperor's coin in today's gospel is a demonstration of this thesis. The scholars and religious experts of his day, of course, think that they will trick Jesus into flagrant treasonous remarks. And we know how empires respond to those. <laughs> Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Of course it's lawful, under the law of empire which rules us. Whose head is portrayed on the coin? When Jesus holds up the denarius coin in Matthew's story, Matthew's largely Jewish Christian audience would recognize the irony. Unlike the God of Moses who held the divine hand over Moses' eyes to keep God's face hidden, the emperor's image was emblazoned everywhere in the empire in a kind of manipulative branding, along with his title, Son of God. With his image and title, the emperor laid claim to territory, power, and possession. The brand of emperor was immediately recognized as the power of Rome imposed and maintained by the military machine, and the label said that this was the incarnation of God. Taxation, of course, was one of the means by which the occupying oppressors kept a grip on the population while forcing them to pay for the privilege. Paying the tax could be interpreted as cooperation with a foreign occupier. It was quite against the law of God, as received in the Torah. But of course, everybody paid it, if they valued their life, and looked for a little preferment within the system. Those who asked Jesus this question undoubtedly paid the tax, or they would not have kept a position of leadership in their community. Give Caesar his due. But wait, there's also the choice for giving God's due. I wonder if Jesus was suggesting that we always have a choice 
for the systems to which we attach our allegiance and its due. If we want to invest in Caesar and the system of empire, we use Caesar's tools. In this case, the coin of the realm. If we choose to invest ourselves in God's way, those are not the tools we use. The tools that are God's due in the tradition of the prophets, patriarchs, and matriarchs are justice and mercy and compassion and never failing love. Jesus' response to his questioners is, in fact, subtly treasonous. For it is suggestive of a choice that each has the power to make. If Jesus' followers cease rendering Caesar his due, the system of empire would be weakened in its grip of power. And I think Jesus was not just reflecting upon the taxation system, but about all of the ways in which ordinary people cooperate and collaborate with power systems, both consciously and unconsciously, and thereby betray the face of God revealed to God's people weaken the reign of God. In this generation, circumstances are forcing each of us to examine the systems that claim our allegiance and to re-examine the choices each of us makes that lends due to them. Everything from riots following violent police action targeting people of color to lobster wars on the east coast of Canada to the imbalance of those most affected by this global pandemic are like Jesus holding up the coin with the emperor's likeness to us. Because bubbling just below the surface of our unexamined lives and assumptions, unconscious entitlements, and sometimes even our language, lies the question of true allegiance. Systems cannot remain entrenched without the support of individuals through individual action and choice rendering allegiance and due. Whether Caesar appears in the guise of systemic racism, global economic imbalance, indifference to poverty and poor health, or ignorance of the global impact of our consumer habits, Caesar only continues in power because we all continue to render unto Caesar what is due to Caesar, often because we do not even stop to think about it. Like those who ask Jesus the question, sometimes we've enjoyed the privilege for so long, we've stopped questioning the allegiance that our actions and lifestyles proclaim. I think Jesus still sits there in the marketplace, particularly in the marketplace holding up a coin, which reflects back to us the question of allegiance. Especially in this coming season, when events like the Black Friday frenzy, which is now being, I hear, extended to several days and over the World Wide Web, will soon expose North America in all its self-satisfying hedonism and entitlement it's mine! No, it's mine! We've seen the images. Let's all take a moment and look up and catch the glint of that coin in Jesus' hand for a time. Let Jesus pose the question of the effect of the things we do there in the marketplace. To whom are we rendering our time? How are we being co-opted by external power and domination? Are there ways that we, with Jesus, can refuse our participation? Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. I'd just like to close with prayer that Richard offered at the end of his reflection. Let us pray. Oh, great
great love. Thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory. Listen to our hearts' longings for the healing of our world. Knowing you are hearing us better than we are speaking, we offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen. Amen. Assuming a posture for prayer, let us pray. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone. For this community, our country, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Todd, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and His church. We pray now for our own needs and for those of others. And in this time, I invite you to offer up any petitions that are on your hearts. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name We pray also for those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Remembering Cameron Hastings. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your Amen. compassion, forgive us our sins, Amen. known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Invite us to stand together. Just a reminder that during our COVID time, we aren't shaking hands or embracing, but acknowledging one another with great eye contact and gestures. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Eternal God, your word inspires our faith. May we who offer you our praise trust you in all things. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all of creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon this offering of your church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Take it and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in Him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to remain in your place. I will come to you with communion, at which point uh, you receive communion. You take off your mask to receive, and please be seated after you receive communion.
Uh, and to all of you who are out there, thank you for joining us and being with us today on Facebook Live and on YouTube this afternoon. Uh, we're glad uh, that you all could make time for us. Just a reminder that every Tuesday, the service for the 10 days forward will be up on the uh, webpage. And uh, Selena sends those notes out. We ask you to please register uh, to come and please indicate uh, if there's if, how many of you are coming, uh, just so that we, because we're right up on the wire today. So we want to make sure we don't we don't uh, have to leave anybody out. So let's make sure we all be diligent and uh, and register as we can. I think that's all, except to give you the regular COVID announcement that you know when we're done, we'd ask you to take your leave from the rear of the aircraft. Um, out that door, starting from the back row, straight into the parking lot, and on your way. And Greg has finally come to life. Here we go. He's got <laughs> I knew there was something over there, I just couldn't no, get to no, it. No, just, it just occurs to me, I just want to uplift uh, Kevin and Rob Henderson and Ian Stevenson uh, for the leadership they're giving through the kind of work they're doing on the Vickers Crossing. And I, I really want to commend to you. Um, the special program they did this week with Jim Cornelius from Canada Food Grains Bank if, and to learn about this wonderful ecumenical piece of work uh, on behalf of 15 uh, of the churches of, of Canada including our church, the Anglican Church of Canada through the Primates Fund. Uh, and I just, I just really want to express the gratitude of many, many people that I talk to about the work that you, you folks are doing through this. Uh, Thank, thank you for that, and if I can just echo, Jim Cornelius uh, is, is an incredible podcast to get. The Canadian Food Grades Bank is not something a lot of us know about, but it's something that we, our church has participated in for many, many years, um, and uh, it's, it's, it was World Food Day on Friday, and we much, and your, your uh, homily actually calls us into this reality of, of actually examining where we pay our allegiance, and there's lots that we can do. So let us all be informed as we can. Thank you for those kind words, Greg. Let us uh, stand for a final question. The Lord be with you. And also with you. My friends, may today there be peace within you. May you trust God that you are now where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities born of faith in you. And may you use the gifts that you have been given and pass on the love that has been given to you. And may you be content knowing that you too are a beloved child of God. And may God's presence settle into your bones and allow your souls the freedom to sing, to dance, to praise, and to love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all today and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And I see God.
this day.